Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? As we do it live on a Tuesday night here, welcome to PT Pinecast, a podcast that saves physical therapists from missing out on amazing insight, remarkable ideas, and motivational stories here in the world of physical therapy for PTs and PTAs. My name is Shuma McKay. I'm excited to have you here tonight. I'm pumped. We're talking about something that um, I, I think we, we, we come across sometimes, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited to dig into this with a cousin of physical therapy. I love to talk about the PTs and the OTs and the SLPs. Not really brother and sister. I like to think of them as cousins. Similar, not the same. Same family, right? Different parents. That's how we look at it. So we're going to talk to Katie tonight, who's an OT who works in assistive technology and how you can bring that into your clinical practice, no matter what setting it really is. It's kind of exciting. It's cool. I mean, I think it's cool right now, right? Because we were talking about telehealth, uh, at CSM last February, which is almost a year ago, which is crazy to think that was almost a year ago because it feels like 10 years ago. Um, and people kept saying, wow, telehealth, that's the future, maybe five years from now. And then um, little did we know, 2020, we'd have to embrace that. And we did. Uh, but assistive technology, how can you use it in clinical practice? We're going to dig into that. Uh, something I do want you to know about is a really, really cool conference that we're actually helping put on. Bring that graphic up. We are putting on an, an, a conference for physical therapists, physical therapist assistants, who are looking to up their oncology physical therapy game. Uh, we are calling it, I know, it is a very clever name, the Oncology Physical Therapy Summit, virtual. We'll let people know this thing's going on in April, so you have some time right now. And here's what the website looks like. We'll put it, we'll put the link to this below. Uh, but you'll be able to improve your physical therapy skills working with patients with a history of uh, oncology, uh, excuse me, cancer diagnosis in, in uh, the oncology setting. And as former guests have notably said, if you're working with humans, you want to know how a, a cancer diagnosis can come into play. So this conference, we have a lineup. If you're watching this online or watching the replay, I mean, just check out some of these names and you're going to recognize a lot of these people. We're actually adding some more speakers very soon, uh, but some really, really great topics. So check this out. Again, link in the comments, link going to be in the, uh, the show notes as well. The Virtual Oncology Physical Therapy Summit. Right now we've got early bird tickets. And again, that event live on April 17th, but we'll also give you unlimited access for 365 days after that. So that's pretty cool. So wanted to get that out of the way, let you know that that's what we're doing. So uh, with that being said, let's get the hype music back up again. There we go. That's good. Uh, bring in our guest tonight, uh, Katie Butsu, occupational therapist and assistive technology mentor. Uh, she's from Michigan. Michigan chapter leader in Makers Making Change and currently collaborating with I love this name. Whoever whoever thought of this name and then somehow got the rest of the team to get in on this, collaborating with Makey Makey to use their tool as an assistive technology device. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome in Katie to the show. Where is she? Where she is. Katie. Hello. How did I do with your last name? You did phenomenal. That was actually first time. <laughs> Really? For anybody. Because like I was reading the intro, I was like, oh, before we met backstage, I didn't ask her how to say her name, which I usually yeah. do. I'm usually pretty good at that. And I was like, oh, man, now I got to do it. And if I don't butcher it. Uh, Katie, said, don't Katie, get to pick your name when you get married, unfortunately. <laughs> so, true. Yeah. You get to all the time. Yeah. Uh, Katie, uh, we get the, the super hard questions out of the way first. So first question, always the hardest. What are we drinking tonight? Okay, so I recently started doing the whole gluten-free thing, and okay. I'm a big beer drinker, but yeah. I, I'm doing cider right now. So I had to represent Michigan. We got Blake's Hard Cider going on, triple jam. Just just to be very clear, cheers to you. I'm doing a uh, Bell Two-Hearted uh, Ale, so cheers. Always first a good one. We never discriminate, you know, drinking, uh, obviously, uh, always optional, so never mandatory. And we never discriminate on what someone likes. Because I do, I like fruity drinks and fruity beers sometimes, and I take heat from them. You know what? <laughs> I like it. That's what I like. Uh, Want to thank our friends from Owens Recovery Science. They're a single source for PTs looking for a certification in personalized blood flow restriction rehabilitation training. BFR, as the cool kids are saying it. Find them online at owensrecoveryscience.com. And they were just involved, I'm not sure if you saw this, Katie, uh, in a 60 Minutes piece. Well, they were in an ESPN piece, a 30 for 30, on Alex Smith, the quarterback that had the horrific leg injury. And then Johnny Owens, a PT, uh, Stefania Bell, who's a PT, works for ESPN. They put together this kind of story following Alex Smith. I mean, they were talking about losing his leg. I mean, he was 
he was in danger of not living. And he went back to actually starting and winning a, a game in the National Football League this year. So it was a cool story of how Owens Recovery Science com- was kind of involved in BFR and his recovery. Just cool to see whenever you see PT or OT in a movie, yeah. we always get excited or like news. So mm-hmm. that was pretty cool to celebrate that win. But uh, find exactly. out more about BFR at OwensRecoveryScience.com. Cheers to Johnny and his, uh, his team there, Kyle Kimbrell and those guys for being a part of that. So we got that out of the way. So that's the first round, Katie. That's what? the hard part. Everything else from here on out, super <laughs> easy. Uh, so your superhero backstory, you're an occupational therapist, but who do you get to treat? Who do you get to work with? Yeah, so um, I'm a full-time occupational therapist in the school setting. So I primarily work with kiddos um, anywhere between the ages of two and a half, with my oldest probably being about maybe 18 years old, um, primarily center-based. Um, so a little bit more involved um, kiddos, and I absolutely love it. I've been in the schools for about three years now. Um, but I also do outpatient. So I do outpatient pediatric and neuro, both adult and pediatric. So um, get to kind of see a variety there. So that's been fun. Um, my background, though, I've worked anything. I've done acute care. I've done inpatient rehab, um, done outpatient, um, always pretty much pediatrics or neuro. Um, I have experience in ortho, but it's definitely not my jam. So I'm always like experience. learning. You look like someone's attacking you, like experience in ortho. Yeah. But like, yeah, uh, I know my go-to peeps to refer for that. I'll say that. <laughs> um, I, I I started my PT career in outpatient orthopedics, and then after like a year, I went I went to outpatient pediatrics and got to work at a clinic where it was mostly OTs in the clinic. Maybe let's say there was like maybe five to six uh, PTs, and then the rest like maybe fifteen to uh, you know uh, OTs. And you guys learn some stuff that we do not learn in PT school. Like, I mean, especially in pediatrics, I watched kiddos come in and I'm like, how will we ever get that child to, you know, follow and listen? And and then like a week later, I'm watching the OT like, and I'm like, how did you do what sort of magic juju do you have? And they just figured stuff out. And I was like, I just got to pay attention. They taught me so much in a year that I was there. I was at a clinic called Good Beginnings in false uh, church, Virginia, and they were just magic. So kudos for you guys, especially in pediatrics. I don't know what quarter magic stuff you guys were taught, but wow, holy cow. Well, yeah, no, I would say, I would say that's been my, a lot of money after school. <laughs> it's been my uh, area of interest for like the last um, few years. I mean, kind of went into OT knowing I wanted to work in pediatrics, but then um, over the last couple of years, I uh, found a new like love and passion for assistive technology. And I think it's an area that is so skilled and um, really, unfortunately, we, you know, we see where like, it's a lot of people don't know enough about it. Um, they don't, and you don't know what you don't know. So I've become really passionate about advocating for it and the resources that I've um, been fortunate to, enough to learn about in the last couple of years. And I love being able to share that I've um, spent probably the last two years doing a lot more continuing education. And I am able now to um, represent that within the school. So I've taken on a new role where I help to mentor um, other therapists, other teachers, support staff, parents um, on the use of technology, whether it's yeah. from something low tech and the child maybe needs, um, you know, an adapted pencil gripper or a pen that helps read to them all the way to high tech. I have kids that um, use their eyes to access their communication devices. Um, so it's been, you know, really neat. And obviously we know in the world of technology, as you mentioned before, I've been primarily a virtual therapist majority of the school year. So um, I have learned that technology is the present, but it's also the future. Yeah. And so um, I think people are like, well, you know, we still need to write. And then I realized like in a day, like, yes, there is power in writing. And yes, there is importance in being able to hold a pencil. But like, I barely write my name in a day anymore. And, um, you know, just that access component. And it's been so cool, because our assistive technology committee, it is um, multidiscipline. So we have OTs, PTs, um, speech therapists, and I, I learned so much from every discipline, because it's like, you know, sometimes it's just the quick fix of making sure that their knees are positioned at 90 degrees, and then the kid can access their device. And it's those things, um, you know, maybe they need to provide some form of like lateral support and then now the kid can use their technology um so it really does take a full team and an understanding of the child at whole to be able to really you know it's not about just picking off something off the shelf um when it comes to assistive technology but really finding something that meets them where they're at meets you know the setting the environment um their skill of and their you know inabilities as well so it's been really cool to 
partner with, you know, all disciplines for best practice. Cool. All right. So you, you kind of highlighted it there, right? That was my first question. Like, how do you define assistive, assistive technology? Um, usually the answer is in the name. So I would say technology that allows that, that assists people to perform tasks yeah. the APLs or tasks in their life. And you, you, I liked how you highlighted low tech, which would be like a pencil grip. Like that's technology, right? I mean, if you need that to use that device. Yeah. And I always like to, like, I, I bring this up often is like, we all use some form of assistive technology every single day. So whether it's, you have an alarm clock to wake you up in the morning, like technically that's an aid that is helping you get up out of bed if, or you're wearing eyeglasses. That's correcting, you know, your visual impairments. Um, we, a lot of us now we're on our phones and we're doing voice to text. That's assistive technology, you know, at its best. So it's things that are one going to allow you to be more independent, but two can help with like efficiency or just completing yeah, your everyday routine. But I like how you highlight that because I think people go to the bleeding edge and believe me, like power wheelchairs that allow people to go from sit to stand and, uh, you know, I writer technology. We've had Blair Casey from uh, Team Gleason, Steve Gleason's organization, who really pushes the boundaries in terms of like uh, Google and Apple and uh, Microsoft in terms of, hey, let's make sure these technologies are still advancing. Let's make sure we advocate for the people who need these devices because yeah. quite literally, like, you know, especially with Team Gleason, working with people living with ALS those people literally need a voice because they don't have one, you know, voice banking and, and, and making sure that those technologies are available. So I like how you highlight the low tech, listen, a pencil grip, uh, an alarm clock, you know, that's technology all the way up to the, to the high end. So yeah. um, you get to integrate this in your practice and in, in your daily life, which has got to be fun, but you work with an organization called, and again, I said this in the intro because I, I, as a, I like to consider myself as thinking creative, right? Someone probably threw out the name for this organization, but then some of the people were like, well, maybe we should make the name less fun. And I like the fact that someone threw out the name of Makey Makey and they actually went with it because we need a little bit of like, yeah, it's called Makey Makey. So with a name like Makey Makey, it's got to be really fun and innovative. What What is Makey Makey when someone asks you that? Okay, so I'm going to give you the backstory on how I found out about yeah. Makey Makey and then give you like what the product is and then how like yes because when i looked it up um first thing was it i had seen it um at a ot meeting actually a staff meeting and our um technology integration specialist in our isd comes out you know he's always got the brand new things on the market brought it out and he hooked it up to play-doh and he hooked it up to a banana and like he was tapping it and it was playing music i'm like cool not really sure how i would ever use this and then I realized probably almost a year later, actually, um, I was at a conference and I was like, looks cool again. I'm like, and then I was a mindset. I'm like, ultimately that's a switch is what that's doing. So it basically is a circuit board and it takes everyday objects and it turns it into, it actually is a keystroke. So as you see on the screen right now, they're hooking up a banana and the banana's banana not too far. Fun. Yeah, so, and so um, we've kind of, as I started diving into it, I was like, this is awesome for therapy. Like, I'm like, there are so many things like that person's working on fine motor skills. They're working on visual motor skills. I'm like, so it really just took like an OT's lens to look at it from a different mindset. So it wasn't obviously intended for this purpose at all. Um, and what happened was I actually, um, when I came up with kind of like, I want to look, you know, dig deeper and started making some ideas for some kiddos that I was personally working with. I had um, looked online and came to find, um, so this is my sh first shout out to Tom Heck, which is um, used to be with Makey Makey, and he had created a YouTube video. He was actually featured um, on TED Talk, and what it was was he was working for the company, and he was like he teamed up with um, a classroom with children with special needs, and he started to have kids that were um, working on like learning about circuits, learning about technology, and they were creating things for other children that were in um, had special needs. So they were basically learning design. They were learning innovation. They were learning about technology, um, but they were customizing something um, so that somebody that they knew could actually use this. And so I was like, this is really cool. Then I realized how behind the times we were because this video was dated from like 2006. And I was like, wow. what? the product came out, um, you know, or well, the product came out in 2010. So it was probably back in like 2016, but it was still like four or five years old. So I, um, we made a video, myself and my coworker, and we sent it to them and we're like, we want to know you guys. And they actually were like, we'd love to meet you. So we started chatting with them and then they were like, 
this is awesome. Like, you know, this wasn't what it was intended to be for. And um, like I said, it's, it really is just a teaching a basic circuit through this fake six circuit board. And it helps you learn and, um, the understanding of a circuit and you um, teaches about um, conductive, you know, electricity and things like that. Um, and they're like, but if it's gaining someone access to something like that's wonderful. Well, the, the nice thing about it is it's $50. So I was like, this is great because often we know with assistive technology or anything in medical world, one, you put that AT in front of it. Yes, it's money. And then two, it's just, unfortunately, you know, you're dealing with insurance companies and it's a very long drawn out process. And so often what I see is like, we're basically putting the child on pause and waiting for insurance. Right. And so, or like sometimes you'll go through the whole process and really like that that product doesn't end up being the right one. And then you have to wait five years. And so um, it's a nice like it's been nice almost like for that middle ground of you're trying to figure something out. Um, so like, for example, um, the how I originally, like I said, first started working with it was I was working with a child with autism and. Uh, he was working on fine motor skills, working on attention to be able to sit and participate in fine motor activities. And I maybe would get like 10 seconds out of them. And so um, I had created um, adapted paint brushes. And so he was more at the cause and effect play level. So he's about a six month old level. And so um, basically created paint brushes. And so every time he touched the paintbrush to the paper, it would make sound. He wasn't doing anything with the computer, but it was just causing that sound and effect. We got him to sit for 40 minutes and participate wow. in painting. And then he had peer interaction and he was imitating some like of the lines and it was just awesome to see. And so it kind of really opened up my eyes of like, what else can I do with this thing? So, so for the podcast audience who yeah. maybe wasn't able to see the video yeah. we were playing, really it's, it's a way for you guys to gamify everyday objects. You yeah. use an alligator clips to turn a banana into a space bar or several bananas into a virtual uh, keyboard on your computer. So it makes noise. For sure. but there's no coding. There's no hardware. There's minimal hardware. And there's definitely no software involved. So it's a $50 item that will yeah. allow you to gamify a lot of these objects. And you can use it with anything on the online. So when I think about this, like, um, and I'll kind of like give you guys like a background of like, I often will use it with some kids, like, for example, that they love Thomas the Train or they love Big yeah. Shark, right? That's right. like the go to songs. You can set it up where like that becomes the um the, to activate the key to actually click the mouse on the youtube video so i'll have kids work on um hitting it and then it, their favorite youtube video comes on it's been a like life-changing thing for me during virtual because i work with kids still that are very involved and are using switch access and they're on the computer so it allows me to gauge yep they hit the switch because the music came back on so it's been really nice um like you said it takes everyday objects so like tin foil um but that's where i was like nothing I was really doing was um, like coming up with new interventions. I was taking everyday OT, PT related interventions and then basically just gamifying them. So some examples um, to include, like um, I had seen, you know, that um, one of my kiddos was working a ton on weight shifting and we were working on, I was co-treating a lot with um, a PT. And so she was often using like the rocker board and, you know, just a lot of those um, typical things that you would see in a clinic. Right. And so like, well, a rocker board can become a switch. And so we just lined it with aluminum tape and it became um, grounding in that way. And so it's understanding of like yeah, that the child basically needs to be the earth. And then you have to like have that understanding of circuits. It is the most easy product to use, but it's been, like I said, a game changer in my therapy mm -hmm. sessions. Um, I've done anything to work on for with PTs. I've helped create things to work on like single leg um standing balance. So we've worked on um, gross motor coordination. We've worked on um, range of motion. So it really it. lets you, and I love how you put your OT mind onto it, which is like, okay, I get this. I can, number one, it's easy. It's it's universally adaptable. It's pretty easy to use with everyday yeah. objects. No okay. real higher level engineering degree required, but you're able to kind of wrap your PT OT brain around and go, how can I make this fun? Like when you were talking about creating, uh, using the rocker board, it reminded me of, have you ever heard of Go Baby Go? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yep. Cole was talking about, you know, one time using an ATV and they're like, we wanted the kid to stand. So every time he sat down, they reversed the switch mm -hmm. and the ATV turned off. So he had to 
Dan yeah. to, to, to to make the ATV move. Alex. And it's just gamification. And you're saying, well, I, you know, I don't know, Katie, maybe this is only for kids. Look at a Peloton bike, right? Yeah. That little that little output monitor that tells me how fast I'm doing with my cadence and my and my resistance and that little bar that goes up. That's gamification of my exercise. Yeah. So like I was like, yeah, no, I would not put a limit on age range. So like when I when you see the box, it's like designed for like older kids. Well, obviously I've been using it more anywhere from preschool, but I've used it with adults in my outpatient job. So like I kind of now in my mindset, I'll go into an outpatient clinic and when I see somebody like I will sorry if I offend anybody with this, but like I am not a fan of the resistive clothespins. And if I see anybody else just putting up clothespins, yeah, I wish I could just rip them out of every clinic. So, <laughs> but I, you know, it's like, I get their point, like you're working on some finger strength, but how often are you actually doing that? So I was like, that's going to be in the clinic and it's going to be used. It's got to be used for something a little bit more gauging. And so basically you can, same thing there, like you could have made that working on pin strength or working on their um, range of motion to reach to the top. And that actually becomes resistive by adding just a piece of aluminum tape and working in, you know, like working in the field of therapy, at least in an outpatient setting I've worked in, it is like, we're like scheduled on the hour, you yeah. have minimal prep time. And so the thing is, is like, sometimes it's just a matter of me sticking the alligator clip in Play-Doh and then make that using that to make the whatever I'm doing to be conductive. Um, but it just adds that piece of technology in which we know is highly engaging for not only a child with a disability, but any child or any adult like that's yeah. our norm. Yeah. I mean, look, look at products like you familiar with blaze pods. Mm -mm. Lace no. pods are pretty much like dots, right? Like a dot about the size yeah. of a hockey puck and you get like a set of four or five of them and they connect to an app very quick, very quick and easy. And all of a sudden you want to work on speed and agility for high performance yeah. athletes. Yeah. You hit go and one of them is going to blink and you've got to move your hand yeah. that way. And yeah. you know, Same so You got orange theory, you know, mm -hmm. like how can yeah. I make, yeah. how can I gamify and make my heart rate part of yeah. the scoreboard? And mm -hmm. so I just, I, I wanted to bring you on to talk about Makey Makey because I think that's a good example of, listen, whatever's been done, we can still do a little bit more. We can still spin it. And I think that's the innovation that a PT, an OT, an SLP really brings to it, no matter what age our patients are. Yeah. And so I think like I always go back like in my outpatient job, especially or like, I mean, I guess any field I've really been in um, within therapy is like get a new hot toy and it's like the only toy that you see every kid playing right. with. And it's just like, that's fine. And you can try to like mix it up a bunch of ways, but that's where I'm like, that's where I find almost like my creativity and I challenge myself of like, okay, so in the clinic, for example, like, so one of the things um, I think you had the video that we could show is like the hula hoop. And so yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. perfect one to show is like, we also know that usually at least where I work, I've ever worked, there's not usually a lot of money that you have for resources. Also correct. We're making a lot of things out of uh, plastic bottles, especially in pediatrics. So Mark Lyons, my um, colleague who has done a lot of this, um, obviously developing this with me, we've created these just short YouTube videos because what happened was we'd often see like ideas and it would give you the end product, but there'd be no sort of form of instruction. And let's be honest, like as an OT, I had no idea like anything about circuits or anything about soldering or <laughs> stripping wires. I've learned a lot, but I've learned a lot through trial and error. And so we try to create these videos. Um, so this one's just taking a therapy ball. You're going to see an exercise ball probably in every single clinic. Um, we used some speaker wire, but you can also use if you've got like Ethernet cords hanging around from when you had dial-up internet, some duct tape. Aluminum tape is my best friend when it comes to conductivity with a lot of these. Um, and so you can see it just basically created like a target. Um, and then you see right here, those are some fancy, those are called zip snips. So if you're going to get really technical with those, I would yeah, fancy I would them, they're great scissors. Um, but yeah, so I made these foil targets. So basically these are going to what completes the circuit. So these are going to be positioned on the floor. And so kind of like what you were just saying with those like blaze dots this is kind of the same concept is basically these are going to go on the floor um, and act as targets. So for example, this could be your left arrow and your right arrow. So say a kid wants to play Super Mario Brothers and they've got a create uh, Mario running on the screen. They have to move all the way to the left. Um, you'll see I kind of demo it at the end, but I'm sitting on the ball. So we know that we're working on core stability. We're working on weight shifting. We're working on, you know, motor control, all of those things. But as you can see on the screen on that video, I'm actually um, causing the, 
Yeah, I'm playing the bongo. So, so, but working on dynamic sitting balance, working on static sitting balance, or working on motor planning and weight shifting. So a variety of skills. And I will tell you that ball, like, that, you know, once I've made one, it, but now it's made and it takes two seconds to hook it up. It's a matter of just sticking right. the thing and attaching it to anything. Like, um, like I said, it doesn't have to be just be um, a child related thing. If um, somebody's like, okay, I really like playing Fortnite. <laughs> I don't know, like I'm trying to think older guy games or things right. like that. You could really, anything that can be played on the computer could be um, accessed that way. How can I bring the interest of whomever I'm working with into this therapy session? Because that makes it meaningful for them. And therefore they will, you know, you mentioned mm -hmm. uh, prolonging standing balance for someone. If mm -hmm. you make it meaningful, they will stick around a little bit longer. I think one, on one, one of my rotations, I was working with an older adult patient and we, they had, it, it wasn't an off the shelf system. It was like a therapy video game system. This is like, just as like the, I think the Wii was kind of really peaking and it was some like game where you hit like moles with a, with a hammer. Mm -hmm. You would have thought this lady was like fighting for her life. And then I think like the computer messed up and didn't give her credit for one. And she was screaming at the, at the video game. Like, I hit that one. And it just, I was like, wow, if we were using clothespins, Katie, I don't think she would have gotten nearly as fired up. She cared. She really cared about her damn high score. And she wasn't even thinking about the fact that she was reaching overhead or she was, you know, moving her arms. So like, I think that, you know, if you can make it meaningful and uh, well, here's a quick question. What, what is the age that we should stop making things meaningful? There Never. isn't. So it's not Never. just, yeah, it's just make, make it meaningful. Yes. And I like, I guess like I always say that that's where I get on my uh, soapbox is like, and I'm guilty for it. So I, all of you therapists that are listening, I'm sure at some point we were all guilty of this, but when we work with very involved kiddos, I will say like, often we think cognitively they're at like a younger age. So we pull out this toy that's like for a baby. And then you see a 16 year old working on pulling toys out of a shape sorter because that's what skill level they're at. But I'm like, do you think a 16 year old boy really wants to be playing with a shape sorter? So yeah. that has been like, the for me like i'm like that, that's not okay and so i i that's like where i really am like we need to do more in there's so many resources out there that we can do so, more so you bring up something that are, are you familiar with steven spawn mm -hmm, yeah so he's great so look him up on twitter we'll, we'll find him we'll put the link in there so steven's a real big advocate for taking games like you mentioned fortnite or call of duty or any game and making sure there's a way and making sure there's a way embedded in the game to make the difficulty level adaptable. Mm -hmm. So if you were making, if you were taking that exercise ball that we just talked about, you made a circuit left and right. If you were to throw someone to play Fortnite or, or some advanced video game, that'd be that'd be just really hard, even if you were a top level athlete to compete. Because we're I mean, these things are designed for very fine motor, right? Mm -hmm. But if you can adapt the game to make that 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 difficulty level very easy. Mm -hmm. You can make that game now because now it's meaningful. Now, who does it? What, what 19 year old kid doesn't want to play Fortnite? Apparently, all of them want to play Fortnite. Just spoiler alert for you. But if you can make that adaptable, and Steven is an advocate on, especially Twitter, in terms of talking about that, and he daily, it, almost daily, he faces, well, why the hell would we want to do that? And he's trying to highlight there are a lot of people who'd like to be included, but you're leaving them out. Mm -hmm. So if you embed this in the game, if you bake this in the cake from the beginning, you don't leave anybody out. So I, yeah. I well, also want to highlight, like, you're not leaving anybody out because you're saying, let's be creative, let's make it meaningful, let's make it easy. We want mm -hmm. therapists hurt. If it takes 45 minutes to set up, I can't do it. And makey, makey, it solves a lot of these things and devices yeah. like that. And I'll say, like, too, like, that's where, like, I'm still learning and trying to grow is like, um, when you were saying earlier, like it doesn't involve coding, like, no, it doesn't involve any coding, but it does pair really well with a program called scratch, which is very simple coding, like elementary level learning learns it. And so I've actually been working on a lot of like, okay, so this child really does like unicorns and like just learning how to basic, like if they move their body, for example, if I'm working on range of motion and I'm like trying to get them to flex their shoulder and they touch the top arrow, maybe the unicorn jumps. And so right. learning that understanding of like those keystrokes. So you, you can advance it to that level as well. If you, right. you really got into it, which is cool, right. you know, as well. Yes. I love that. We'll talk about 3d printing in just a second, but I have to let people know that I don't know if I even talked about this. It's hard to see on the screen, but this is one of my favorite drinking glasses. It says it's one of my favorite lines from game of Thrones. I drink and I know things. <laughs> uh, we're giving away some pint glasses, Katie. 
Uh, we're going to give away like one per episode starting, I think, next month. If uh, if you want one of these free pint glasses mailed to you, by the way, uh, for free. Yeah, Katie wants one. <laughs> uh, hit uh, ptpintcast.com. Uh, there you can enter the pint glass uh, giveaway. Uh, it's all from our friends at your CBD store. Uh, CBD is coming up in conversation with pediatric patients, with general, older adult patients, all patients uh, at your CBD store. It's headed by a physician. They know you want to be an up-to-date therapist in terms of having these conversations. If something pops up, if people are using it, you want to make sure that you understand how it's going to potentially uh, affect your treatment session, right? Mm -hmm. In order to stay up to date, you need the latest information about CBD and how it'll affect your patient. The problem is there's so much information out there and so little time in your day, as we know. It can make you feel just kind of confused and overwhelmed. And our CB, your CBD sort of things, it's just plain wrong to give, not be able to give your patients care from the latest evidence. So go CB, go to CBDRX4U.com. That's the website, CBDRX4U.com. Check out their educational links, check out their offerings and how it might affect your patients. And then begin speaking confidently and clearly about CBD for your patients. Look, you're, you're not going to be prescribing this, right? But if this is going to be, you know, being taken by your patients, you want to understand that. So go to cbdrx for youcom so you can stop feeling overwhelmed about the use of CBD with your patients and start feeling confident that you've got the latest and accurate information. And hey, why not score a free pint class while we're doing it? People like the free stuff. So again, hippytpinecast.com and sign up for that. Uh, a pretty cool use of adaptability. I remember when I first saw my three, my first 3D print, I was like, so it makes like a real thing, not a picture of a thing. It makes a real thing. Um, how have you been bringing 3D printing into, into your product? Like, wh wh where does your OT brain go with this stuff? I'm so excited to share this with you guys. <laughs> so also very cool is I actually, uh, so back to like cost and we knowing that assistive technology is often not covered by insurance, unfortunately. Right. I um, was working with a little boy who has um, cerebral palsy and hydrocephalus and he could not feed himself and he was four years old. He could not hold a spoon and they kept working on like, just working on his grass, working on his grass. I'm like, okay, but at what point, like, do we look at a tool versus like, you know, to help him. And so um, we were trying like, a bunch of different, just universal cuffs that were like already on the market you know, like the basic strap, well, his skin was super sensitive to it. And so it was bothering him. So every time it would like leave indentations or it'd get a rash. So I'm like, well, that's not working. And then they're like, well, you put like a glove. I'm like, you didn't have to have a glove and the universal yeah. coffee. Right. So I started looking a little bit online and was like, things were like 20 to $25. I ended up purchasing one on Amazon and it didn't work. And then I was like, you know what? Um, I knew we had a 3d printer and we have access to one. I'm like, there has to be like, some form of a file and I didn't know anything about 3D printing. So um, stumbled upon um, Makers Making Change, which I'm excited to chat about. Um, so Makers Making Change is actually a nonprofit organization, um, a project out of, um, it's called the Neil Squire um, Foundation and they're based out of Canada. And so this idea of Makers Making Change is actually, they're They've got some big funding behind them. So they've got Google, they've got Microsoft. Um, and what it is, is they actually have teamed up the idea of taking makers. And so that would be anyone that's, whether they have a background in engineering, they just have a high interest of learning to make, create, innovate, um, and they connect it to individuals with disabilities and disability providers. So everything's grant funded. So the person that is receiving the a form of assistive technology is actually right. only responsible of paying the cost of materials, which we know with 3D printing is very, very, very low cost. Um, and then the cost to ship it. So for example, um, I recently created a switch and sent it out to um, an individual in Kentucky and they had to pay $7 for a switch that like on the market commercially made is $80. Wow. So I was so excited because he was telling me he was he's wheelchair bound and he was saying he wanted a switch so that he could turn his coffee maker on and off. And I was like, this is awesome. So um, I would say high quality, these things are tested and they, the engineering that they have background has been phenomenal. So I made um, the file for this kiddo. I tried it and it worked and it was, it cost 17 cents to make this um, wow. <laughs> adapted spoon holder for him or utensil holder. And then I ended up, um, it took about an hour to make it. So I was like, let's make another one. So he has one to go home with him. So we made a couple for him and 
I was like, I got to know more about this company. Like, why do they just have their files for free? I guess, you know, I feel like nothing's free in this world. So right. reached out to them and I emailed them and I was like, I want to know more about you guys. And so um, they had just started um, basically creating chapters um, here in the U.S. So they had a bunch of chapters in Canada. And as a chapter, um, basically, um, were teaching who they are, advocating what they do, educating um teaching makers, like connecting them to the resources, the files, but then also connecting them to the individuals with the disability. So often what happens is like people will make stuff, but they don't even know how do I get this to the people or like, or they'll make something that's Ooh, not, that's a, yeah, that connection is missing. So um, I'm actually the state chapter leader for Michigan. So um, there are, um, I want to say there's probably 12 now, maybe a little bit more chapters throughout the U.S. So definitely um, if you guys get a chance to check out Makers Making Change, if there's a not a chapter in your state and it's something you're interested in starting, it's awesome. So um, it's all volunteer based, but basically what I've, I've learned a ton. So I've learned um, a lot on soldering um, and most recently participated in an eight hour build to create a sip and puff blow switch that is all 3d printed and so um the neat thing about that's kind of their claim to fame and i would like awesome to look up but um there it's called the lip sync and what is neat about it is it's 200 dollars worth of parts so that includes the 3d printed parts and then it's got what's called an arduino which is inside of it that helps with the coding um, but it hooks up to the computer, but it also hooks up to the Microsoft um, Surface for gaming. So it allows someone to video game with just their sips, like, you know, as a sip and puff flow switch. So they do these awesome events in Canada where they'll have people come out. Um, they do events where it's uh, gaming. So they'll actually have them come out the video game and or they want to video game and they they'll come with maybe they have MS or they have ALS or they have. Um, you know, deficits from a motor vehicle accident, and they create switches that will allow them access. So they do these design, you know, like they'll actually do the whole design team of like, this is what the person can do. And it's incredible, the things that they've created. So um, on their website, they actually have a whole variety of um, projects, and it's an open um, open source. So even if you don't want to start your own chapter, but you want to know more about them, get on their email list because they're always adding things. So for example, back to like the low to high tech, they're low tech. They have anything from the 3D printed like utensil holders, but like also like an adapted bag holder. Um, they've got adapted key turners. So say someone struggles with strength to be able to um, turn their key. Um, they've got all the way up to the high tech, like I mentioned, the um, sip and puff flow switch. They've got proximity switches. They have things that attach to someone's wheelchair because they want to be able to feed their dog. So it's like crazy. So makers making change. You've got people who know how to do stuff. Yes. And you've got people who need stuff. Yes. And you connect them. And the only price of the people who need the stuff pay is how much it costs the people who know how to make the stuff, how much it costs them to make the stuff. Yep, it's I mean, wonderful. If you know how to stuff you want, you know how to make stuff you want. Hey, I love if my brain power could help you. And yeah. you're talking about a switch that costs three bucks, but if I wanted to buy it off the shelf, it'd be eighty. Yeah, and the the nice thing too is like there's actually um, a request. So for example, like say you're working with someone, and this is where it comes back to meaningful occupations, and we come, we come across these problems all the time where it's like somebody um you know had a stroke and maybe now they want to be able to yeah feed their dog but they can't access the dog bowl put that in the their devices um their options and what you know they do is they actually um will have they'll connect you with some a design team and try to create um what you're hack asking it. for how do we hack it how do we take what we know yeah. you know we haven't solved this problem and if you know anything about engineers if you've got a friend who's an engineer it's like an itch inside their brain if they're like well there's this problem but nobody's had a solution engineers are just like what you know pts and ot's are like what what are you talking about and that's where like organizations like makers making change go baby go uh you know there's a great esports team that we're talking to in a couple of weeks um who are completely made of quadriplegics all these esport athletes are all quadriplegics and they've figured out uh with logitech how do we take all these switches and get them into games so we can compete on the level with able-bodied gamers. So I love organizations like Makers Making Change, and I and I made sure to, to get this. 
Um, my brother was uh, was getting his his uh, his a deck put on his house this summer. So the contractor was like, you know, shooting the breeze with me. We'd, you know, have a beer after a long day and building the deck. And he's kind of like, what do you do? I'm like, I'm PT, I host a podcast talking about this. He's a maker. Mm -hmm. so he came back like two days later and I'm holding this up for the camera. Yeah. If you want this, but this is part of the thoracic spine. He made me like a pencil holder. So I got this, you know, I just, I just throw some pencils. He's like, yeah, you know, just a couple hours. I like downloaded the file. He's like, I look for something P related, PT related. So I thought, you know, Hey, a thoracic spine thing. So here's my pen and pencil holder, but yep. people who have an itch for helping and making you, yeah. you're right. Sometimes the biggest problem is how do I logistically connect Mm -hmm. with who needs something and that's what great organizations do they solve and, it and that's like the thing is like the more i can get on shows like this and share that because it's like otherwise you wouldn't know to look up makers making change if you you know no. you don't know what you don't know and so i have learned like so much about like yeah people are like i didn't even know that resource or a resource like that was, was even out there yeah and, um, i've watched how helpful it's been for more of the like meaningful occupations versus like um basic ADL. So like if someone's like, I really want to be able to hold my drumsticks, like that was something I came across the summer. Um, a little boy I work with that has cerebral palsy and he's super contracted and he's like, I just want to be able to drum. That's there's never he's been he's 17 years old and it's always been hand over hand like him right. holding and I'm like what? Like and so um you know because what we ended up creating with him was two bucks. <laughs> so I, I think about that. He was two dollars away from a solution for how long? Mm -hmm. But it took you seeing it to go mm -hmm. two bucks. Yeah. Someone figured that out. Let's yeah. let's connect it. It's great that I can ask, you know, a Google or a, an Amazon device for an answer to a question. Mm -hmm. But unless that really has some meaning, yep. like having access to all the information in the world is good, but we want to make sure the right people have the right information to solve real granular problems. And that's mm -hmm. what I love about organizations like this. Websites people can find out. I'm guessing they can just Googleize Makers Making Change. Yeah. I just check them out at makersmakingchange.com. Like I said, if you log on there, I would highly suggest just joining their forum. So they actually have PTs, OTs, engineers, rehab engineers, and um, people just open discussions. So say you're like, hey, I'm working with this person and this is what they want to be able to do. They could point you in the direction of like, we can connect you with a maker or they might be able to point you in the direction of like, put your file, your request here. Um, like I said, I personally have... Um, gotten more on the maker side of things because I what I ended up doing was I became really passionate working in the schools and I kept seeing kids learning about 3D printing like that's a big fad like with sure. classrooms and STEM classes and I kept learning it about um, oh they're learning about 3D printing but they 3D print um, like a duck and I was like cool but that doesn't do anything and so if they're going to learn the skill of 3d printing why don't they learn to make something for a purpose Meaningful. so that's what i've been teaching a lot of our educators so i've shared the resource so now i basically have you know um robotics teams that are working on community projects and they, they're learning how to make these switches and learn how to solder and they're learning all the skills that they would have learned maybe making something but now they're helping to learn how to hack toys and make toys switch adapted and so i'd love to connect people you know on here that are like oh my gosh i could use a toy you know maybe i personally work in an area where um you know low-income families and so unfortunately like we might show a switch to a kiddo and what happens is like that 45 minutes within therapy is the only time they have access to wow. it and it's like then they go home and they don't have toys that are switch adapted. Um, so it really has allowed um, greater access um, throughout all across all, you know, environments for kids and adults. Fantastic. I love that. I love everything you're doing here. You know, Makey Makey is a good example of how can you take something that's cost effective, easy to use, meaningful. I mean, it's got to be meaningful, meaningful, yeah. meaningful. And yeah. then uh, makers making change. Uh, how can you take people who are super smart and have people who need something, put those people together I heard from a, a real smart guy once, uh, technology never really solves a problem. Human, you, you need a human to solve a human problem. Technology mm -hmm. might be the tool you leverage, but a human's got to solve that problem. That's really something like makers uh, making changes. It, it makes that human connection from one to the other. Uh, Katie, are you ready to play three questions? Got it. I sure hope so, because we're doing it right Three questions brought to you by our friends. 
from Fusion Medical Staffing. Uh, happy traveler PTs start here. As a travel PT or PTA, you get to decide where and when and how you do what you, be you do best, which is provide quality care to your patients. Uh, with a traveler first mentality, it means you get full control of your healthcare career so you can create the travel lifestyle you love and deserve. You earned it. And with detailed job transparency, well, they just let you know. You can seriously choose your own adventure, like those books that I used to cheat at in uh, elementary school. Uh, start your adventure at FusionMedStaff.com. That is FusionMedStaff.com. Uh, Katie, you're in Michigan, but once it, we're free to travel and everything's safe, where's one place in the 50 U.S. that you can't wait to travel to? Where's some place you got to go once it's safe? Colorado. Colorado. It's on my Never been there. Want to go there. Why not? Was excited to go there. <laughs> and you can. And that's the cool part. PT, yeah. PTA, OT assignments. You could be a travel, whatever. You know, fill in the blank. Check out yeah. FusionMedStaff.com with that uh, travel transparency. Second question is a what question. What is something you've watched, read, listened to? Book, movie, podcast. Something out there you think the audience could gain value from. Ooh, um... What would you recommend? I think, who do I want to pick on? <laughs> There's a lot of things out there. Ooh, this is a tough one. I, I don't know that I could pick just this one. This is how bit. I stack up my book, my reading list, or my Netflix queue, or my podcast. <laughs> Ooh, um, the new assistive technology. That's actually a book that's out there. Um, and it's Chris Bougay. That's okay. the creator of it. Awesome. That's enough. That's Talks a about one. the maker movement and assistive technology. It's awesome. I'll tell you this. A lot of the things you were talking about, uh, a guy by the name of Corey Doctorow. Have you ever heard of Corey Doctorow? He's a fiction writer, but he wrote about 3D printing years and years and years ago. The first time I ever heard about a 3D printer was actually in a fiction book. And I was like, well, that stuff's, that's fiction. And he was, but he also worked for a website called Boing Boing, which is like very technology oriented. And he was like, no, no, this is going to be a thing. Like this is going to be everywhere. So he wrote about like, the future, like good, bad, and ugly about where 3D printing might lead. So Corey Doctorow and The Makers, actually, is uh, the name of the book. Uh, third question, Katie, is a who question. Who is someone the audience should know more about? So your chance to give like a person uh, a shout out. Like, who's a person you're like, yeah, know more about her or him? I'm going to go with a group. Okay. I'm going to say go with Makers Making Change and go with Making Making. And if you want to follow them on Twitter, um, Colleen Graves, which is um, – from Makey Makey. She shares out awesome tutorials, awesome guides for creating things. Um, and then I would also share out from Twitter is um, Z Kessler and Chad Lehman. They're both from um, Makey Makey. And those are the people that I've been in connection with. Perfect. That's what we want to do. We want people to follow good people. Follow good people on the Twitter, or Facebook, whatever. Don't just follow yeah. someone who has a lot of followers. Follow smart, good people who share good information. Uh, thanks to uh, FusionMedStaff.com for uh, sponsoring three questions. Uh, the last thing we do on the show, Katie, is called the parting shot. Party Shot is brought to you by our friends from the Academy of Orthopedic Physical Therapy. They know you want to be a confident, up-to-date orthopedic physical therapist. In order to do that, you need an easy way to get the latest information so you can best treat your patients. Problem is, new information constantly coming up every single day, and you probably don't have time to keep up with all of it, which can make you feel lost and overwhelmed. Well, they think it's just plain wrong not to have the best information for your, you and your patients. They get it. So go to orthopt.org. Sign up for current concepts of orthopedic physical therapy and begin your journey to becoming a confident and current orthopedic PT. Uh, this way you stop feeling frustrated and overwhelmed. And instead, start getting the cutting edge information from the leaders in ortho PT. Again, that's orthopt.org. Katie, your parting shot, your last chance for kind of like a mic drop moment, a sentiment, a quote. You said earlier you had a soapbox about the, uh, the, the clothespins. That's fine. What would you want to leave the audience after they learned about assistive technology, 3D printing uh, in, in with their patients today? When you think it's impossible, it's possible. Go with that. Yeah. I, I like that. Short and sweet. And it, it really, what your quote does, it's more of a mentality. We're not saying we've solved the problem. Making Makey just has a device that'll help you twist and turn and add. And makers making change, they haven't, they might have, have never heard of the problem you're going to have your patients facing. 
but it's a mindset. It's a process. Mm -hmm. If you think it's impossible, maybe think again that thing's probably possible. So I love that. Uh, Katie, appreciate you coming on here and just talking about good stuff and good people who are trying to make change and make things uh, better for our patients and those that we serve. So uh, I appreciate your time for, for getting us hype about this. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. I'm excited. <laughs>